guys, are you excited? Are you excited? I'm kind of excited. You can see where we are. We're in the truck. I'm excited because I miss it. I miss it a lot. I miss the road. I miss the highway. But at the same time, I don't want to go to work. Well, it looks like we're going to be going on a pretty good trip to get ourselves back into the swing of things. First off, we're taking a load of lumber down to Minnesota just to get us down there. And there's a nice load down there waiting for me that's, well, there's one of two. Uh, one going to Calgary, Alberta, one going to Vancouver, BC. I'd rather have the Vancouver, BC one myself. But whichever one is more pressing, I'm going to take. So uh, those are our options. Either way, we're going to Western Canada and we'll be gone over the weekend. We'll be gone for a few days, probably all of next week. I'm guessing if I deliver in Vancouver or Calgary on Monday, that would get me back home now, probably by the end of next week. But I'm in no real rush, even though I don't really want to be away from home because I've been enjoying time with Britt and friends and it's, it's gonna be a little more difficult than the average trip to be away from her. I still need to get back into the swing of things here and start, you know, start adulting again. <laughs> this is what you gotta do, right? You just gotta get it done. So that, that's, that's the plan right now. So I'm just hooking up to this load of lumber here. I'm gonna strap it down. It'll take me 10, 15 minutes tops. Got my paperwork waiting for me inside there. I'm gonna go grab that and we're gonna head down to Minnesota. I'm not too sure where this is going in Minnesota yet. They just told me Minnesota. They just said that I'm taking this down there, like I said, just, just to get down there. There's a load waiting there for me. Uh, Cause it's better to take a load of lumber down than to go down empty, right? You always want something on your trailer. I'm just the driver, I just do what I'm told, I go where I'm told, when I'm told. Let's get this load strapped down, Let's see if I remember how to do this. Gonna have to get this truck washed. It's dirty. We are ready to rock and roll. Check it out. Nice and easy one to start off with, you know what I mean? Worked up a little bit of a sweat there. Whew. What is this work thing again? How does it happen? Oh. Is it possible to lose shape? <laughs> Is that how you say it? Is it possible to get out of shape in a couple of weeks? Because I should not be sweating this much. Then again, it's hotter. It's hotter outside. There's no more snow around here, which is great. You know how much better trucking is when it's not cold? Trucking is a thousand times better when it's not cold. Just throwing that out there. Thousand times better. I'm having a hard time understanding what FedEx is doing there. Okay, so he's moving now. <laughs> He just parked right in the middle of the driveway. There was a guy who like drove up there and had to back up. Now he's moving. I'm confused, why? There are many questions this world has that have no answer. I guess it just means I'm back in the truck and I gotta deal with everybody else. <laughs> uh, the things you see on the road, that's not even a bad thing. One thing I did see when I, when I got here uh, I was waiting behind a truck to fuel. I'm in Grand Forks, North Dakota. And I wanted to fuel the truck, so I got in line behind someone and the guy wouldn't move, wouldn't move up, wouldn't move up. I could tell he wasn't fueling. So I backed up. Luckily, there's no one behind me. Went in the aisle beside him. My truck was completely empty, pretty much. It just decided to shut itself off. I'm trying to cool this place down, man. Almost completely empty. Took forever to fill up both tanks, right? And then I washed the windshield, threw out the garbage while that was going on, and then I pulled forward into a parking spot and walked diesel, went inside, went to Subway, bought Subway, looked around for a little bit, and then I see the driver of the truck that was in front of me, just shopping around. He was in line at Subway as well. He went and got Subway. He went and looked at, you know, the, the Bluetooth headsets for like 10 minutes. I was just watching this guy. I'm like, your truck has been in the pumps for over half an hour now. Over half an hour. You just parked in the pumps, went inside. What are you taking, your half hour break? This parking lot, as you can see, is pretty empty. I mean, there's a couple of parking spots. I know they're a little tight. I mean, you might not want to back in there. It's a little tight, I understand, right? That one over there, a little, yeah, a little bit of room over there. If you're watching this and you're a new driver and no one has ever told you this before, Please listen carefully. When you are done fueling your truck, move it out of the fuel island. And if you're going to spend 
a half hour inside. Don't just park in front of the pumps either. Go and park in a parking spot like a regular decent human being, please. All right, you've already got me ranting. It's my first day back. I'm already ranting. Why would you park in the pumps? It was. It had to have been at least 45 minutes that he was in there. He was in the pumps when I got there already, and then I fueled did all of my things, and I, 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 I'm ready to leave. He's still in the pumps behind me. Why? Like, isn't it common sense? Like, people want to fuel, and it's not like there's open fuel islands either. Every fuel island is full, and there's lineups behind you. Is this not common sense, or am I just too harsh? My first day back, I'm all riled up already. Why do people do that? If no one has told you this, look me in the eye right now. Move your truck to a parking spot, for crying out loud. People want to get some fuel and go inside, have a shower, get in the subway, looking at Bluetooth headsets. I choose to believe that there are more good people than there are dumb people, or smart people than there are dumb people. But every once in a while, you run into someone really, really dumb. And you're just like, oh my, Lord, I pray for humanity. first day back and I had to stop for a nap <laughs> we're in Fargo North Dakota I was gonna go into the blue beacon here and get a truck wash but the lineup is all the way around the block pretty much so I'm gonna be coming past here again tomorrow night probably pretty late and it's open 24 hours and I'm guessing the lineup won't be so long then at least I'm hoping but oh well I'm resting up I'm ready to go we got another three and a half hours Let's get there. We gotta unload this wood in the morning. figure out how to get out of here <laughs> I know it's probably pretty simple it's probably something really easy for some reason I like to make things difficult oh what happened to your bumper buddy whoops looks like a deer got in the way or something like that now, where's the exit? Hello? How do I leave? I want to go. I'm gonna go around the fuel islands. Watching carefully, making sure no one comes ripping through here, because you know you got some ex NASCAR drivers driving trucks and parking lots all the time. Either that or they're wannabe NASCAR drivers, because I'll tell you what. Actually, they're probably wannabes, because real NASCAR drivers are a little smarter than that. What do you think, Diesel? What do you think? You eat your supper? Good boy. Good boy. Oh, there's the exit. Okay, what? So strange. I don't know. So we were at the Petro in Fargo, North Dakota here. Did not go all the way over here. Where, where, where do people usually exit then? I guess from over there? 
Beside the scale. I guess I could have come through there. Oh. Okay, well. We figured it out. Just make sure that we uh, check before entering the roadway. They put that sign right in the way, didn't they? There we go. Nobody coming. All right. I always feel a little silly doing that because everyone's looking at me like, what is that guy doing? He's trying to leave. I just want to leave. Can I go? There's a restaurant over here I want to check out one day. I keep forgetting. Space Aliens. You see that? Space Aliens. Just got into South Dakota here, the first rest area. A very nice rest area. You can always tell it's a South Dakota rest area because they have that little teepee going on there. Flags are at half staff today for uh, the death of Barbara Bush, I believe, the former first lady. Wasn't there another first lady, former first lady that passed away recently? Nancy Reagan, right? So this would be two former first ladies that have passed away in the last 12 months or so. And from what I've read and from from what I've heard, uh, George H.W. Bush, Barbara Bush's husband, uh, the past president of the U.S., he was a president in what, early 90s, right? Somewhere in there, before President Clinton. Uh, the relationship they had together was something to be admired from what I've heard and from what I've read. I don't know all the details, not like I know them personally, but from what I've read, you know, uh, they were they had a strong marriage that you could look to as an example. And it's nice to see, you know? I read that Mr. Bush was at his wife's side as she passed away. It's nice to see that when a married couple sticks together right to the end, you know, until death do us part used to have a lot more meaning when people said them in their wedding vows. They actually meant it. And in today's society, those words seem to be a little bit more empty quite often. You know what I mean? A lot of people don't take them as seriously as they used to. And I'm not speaking out against divorce. Don't, don't get me wrong. Uh, I understand fully that sometimes things just don't work out. They just don't work out. All that I'm trying to say is, it's really nice to see when it does work out. And you see a cute little old couple, you know, still holding hands. Together to the end, you know? Putting their differences aside and just growing together as a couple. Till the day they die. It's nice to see that. It doesn't happen that often anymore, so when I see that, regardless of who it is, whether they're past presidents or, you know, just a senior couple walking down the street. It's just nice to see when it actually does work out. This truck is really in disarray right now. <laughs> I haven't had time to organize anything yet. But how you doing back there, Diesel? How you doing, buddy? Why are you wearing those funny glasses, man? You look funny. I know. It's for the vlog, buddy. It's all for the vlog. I'll sacrifice my public image. 
on the altar of making a good vlog. No? Whatever, you don't have to wear them. Don't complain. All right. Let us go, we have four hours remaining on our clock. We only have 246 kilometers left to go. Let's turn the interior lights off, there we go. All right, let's get out of here. You ready to go, Diesel? You ready to go? Anybody out there on your side? Don't wanna hit anybody. Okay, just wanted to stop at the rest area here just to brush my teeth trying to get into a better habit of brushing three times a day. I can create these habits and routines a lot easier when I'm on the road. It seems that when I'm at home, all of my routines go out the window. Just pulling into Marshall, Minnesota here. This is where I have to unload in the morning. I gotta find a place to park now. I hope something's open where I can like grab some milk before I go to bed yet. I just want a bottle of milk. Everything was closed in every small town leading up to here, so we'll see if I can find somewhere to park. This seems like a bit of a bigger city. Well, everything here seems to be closed, and I don't see any truck stops or anything around here. Beautiful town, though. Wow. Hashtag impressed. Wow, like, look at that big old steeple up there, big old church. So I'm gonna have to pull over somewhere here and find a, find a place where I can park for the night. I'm not seeing anything. Well, I'm downtown here. I can't stay downtown. Everything seems to be closed. Like there's nothing open, not even a convenience store. Huh. Looks like there's quite a bit of history in this town, though. Turn right on West College Drive. Okay, okay. Turn right on West College Drive. That's right here. Flashing red light means stop sign. Let's see if we can get in here. Anybody coming? four-way stop. Okay. Hey, Diesel. Did I wake you up from your nap? I'm going to pull over and park here very soon. i got to figure out where I'm going to spend the night. Walmart. The only place in town I could find to park. And it's not like I'm the only one who thought the same thing. There's a guy there, more guys down there, more guys there, tons of people here. It is what it is. It's the only place in town to park trucks. There's also more people over there yet too. Bunch of trucks decided to come make this home for the night. So anyways, this is where I'm going to end the day, my first day back after holidays, honeymoon, the vacation, the spring break, whatever you want to call it, the getaway. And it was good. A little tired. More tired than I usually am after a day like this. And I stopped for a nap already too. So I'm easing my way back into it. It'll take me a day or two and it'll be nothing again. So we're going to unload this lumber here in the morning, head over to Minneapolis, grab our next reload and head home. I'll talk to you then. Don't forget to hit that like button and hit the subscribe button and hit that bell beside the subscribe button there as well to make sure you get notifications because YouTube doesn't always notify you of a new video if you're just subscribed. Now apparently you got to be super subscribed. So go onto my page there and click the subscribe button uh, below the video here and hit that bell just to make sure you, you know when I post a video. I'll see you later.